And on top of it, it's Saturday. So trust me, I'm sure we all, we all have one thing in common today. We all wanted to stay snuggled in our beds. So I got you, we got you some cafe con leche, and hopefully uh, that'll keep you warm, and, uh, and some warm food as well. My name is Carlos O. Alvarez. I am the, uh, the proud principal of, of Cohia. Uh, I want to thank you again for coming to our open campus tour. We want to give you a snapshot of what our school is like. And again, we commend you for coming out on a Saturday morning and getting educated on, on what this school is about and what it can offer your children. Okay? So we're going to get started. So, uh, you know, there, there, is no, there is no other school like this. Actually, we're, we're so passionate about our school and we believe in what we're doing so much that we're taking steps to duplicate this school in other parts of the country. And you know, we have a big vision of what we're doing here with our career and collegiate academies and the pathways that we offer the kids and how kids can go straight into these careers after high school and how certain kids can earn their associate's degree and, and college credits while here at no cost to the parents. At no cost to the parents. I'm still paying $150 a month and I graduated from college in 2003. Yes, I am that young. So, we're saving you you know, we're looking, our investment is your child's education. So this is a choice school, it's a charter school, and we believe in giving kids choices. We, give, we believe in giving parents choices. We believe in giving you guys options. And that's kind of what the school is like. It's a one-stop shop where it's customized to the need of your child. So that being said, what's different about us, and you're gonna hear about our awesome academies and our different pathways where kids can get industry certifications and different certifications, and you're going to hear about our advanced placement program if your child is accelerated and taking advanced classes, what we can offer them. And you're going to also hear about our dual enrollment uh, program as well with FIU and Miami-Dade College and Rock High. So we got a bunch of information. We're, we're going to blow you out of the water and give you so much stuff. And we hope you enjoy it, all right? So what is Cohia? <laughs> Little video. into everything in the detail now. Before we begin, I want you to meet some people that, you know, this school is not a one-man show. Carlos Alvarez does not make this school happen. You know, the people behind the scenes that make this school happen, work. it's a complete, like we said, it's a complete family effort. And you, you saw the word up there, family, and that's what we, we're going to continue that culture. Vamos a continuar esa cultura del sentido de familia aquí. All right, so we have our vice principal, Ms. Elise Puente Ocampo. My bodyguard, Daniel, and assistant prince, oh, and assistant prince, sorry, Daniel Montelongo. Our dean of academic and student affairs, Graciela Carbajosa. We have our activities director that makes all this magic happen, Leonette Wad. We have our athletic director, Kevin Freaky, who runs all our sports program. Our cap advisor, student services, Chick Christy Gonzalez. We have our Fire and First Responder Academy Director, Steve Lyon, our Law Academy Director, Victoria Morella, our Director of the Criminal Justice Program. We have Felix Delgado, that's responding to an emergency call. Let your girl, let, let her know you a little while. We have uh, Leslie Rovirosa, our Cafeteria Manager, Accounting Director. We have our Mass Communication Academy Director, Christina martinez Paez. We have our registrar and our Title I, Matika Morales. We have, am I missing, are we looking anywhere else, anywhere else? We have Miss Williams as well, Jenny Williams from our office staff. We have our awesome security, Ricardo, Ricky Ricky, and our beautiful cafeteria staff that came in early this morning to make you a warm breakfast. You see, we're a family. We're all in this together. So, 
We're gonna talk to you a little bit about the academies, and once we're done with the presentation, we're gonna tour the campus so you kind of get a feel what this school is for live about. I'm sorry. So without being said, the Criminal Justice Academy, come on down and uh, let's share some information. So basically, the police academy is split up into four different levels. So in ninth grade, when they enter the police academy, you learn more about the laws, you go through the book, you learn how like the system actually works. And when you get into 10th grade, closer. When you get into 10th grade, you get a little bit more into police work, you learn how to write reports sometimes, and then you code also, police code, they're kind of difficult. And the third year, depending on like, your instructor, you can do forensic science, learning how to do fingerprints and all that. Then you learn how to like go for a crime scene and all the different patterns to like survey a crime scene. And the last year, when we're seniors, that me and her is the PSA Academy, where basically we're getting prepared to take a test so that way when we leave high school and we graduate, we can already get a job in the city, working out in the field, and like actually going to the store and doing like everything that we learned. So in addition to from, from this academy and, and it was in the prior slide, every student has the opportunity senior year to graduate with their public service state certification. That means that right out of high school with their high school diploma, if they wish, if they want, they can go straight into the workforce. We have over 20 students that are PSAs in all different municipalities from Hialeah Gardens, Hialeah, Surfside. And a lot of these students start off as PSA, get sponsored by the department, and then become law enforcement officers. So that is an option. Again, part of the curriculum embedded into the school, all kids in the criminal justice program take the public service aid certification course throughout um, their senior year. All right, and the next academy will be the uh, Fire and uh, First Responder Academy. Alright, so guys, my name is Andres Mendez, my partner. Alright, so my partner is Chris. Christopher Garcia. 
We're in the fire academy. We have uh, two sets of fire academies. We have first responder for the juniors, and you get certified that year. Uh, for senior year, we have um, two separate classes. We have first, um, we have the fire class, and then we have the EMT class, which is uh, what we're taking. And then the other classes are EKG and phlebotomy, which you get certified. And as you see, we, we have our bunker gear here. He's gonna demonstrate how to, he puts his bunker gear. Our um, EMT class is sponsored by Barry University, so that's a uh, that's pretty cool. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm Lieutenant Lyon. I'm a firefighter for the city of Hialeah. I actually work right out of that station, Station Seven, the Hazmat Station. I've been there for a lot of lot of years, and I also train the majority of the firefighters that come to our fire department. Um, our program is different than any other program. I don't think anybody else in the country offers it. If you have a desire to work in the medical field or to become a firefighter or emergency medical technician, there's no other school that offers what we have. As Andres was saying, we have two routes to go when you're a senior. As a junior, you start the fire academy. Um, as a junior, you become a CPR certified and you can become a first responder. Um, all police officers, firefighters, EMS workers all have to be first responders, so that's the first step, okay? As a senior, you have two routes. You can go the medical route, where you take your EKG and phlebotomy technician, you get both the industry certifications in the year, or you take the fire route, where you get certified as a firefighter for the state and an EMT. So a lot of these kids, when they graduate, they are hireable, okay? They are ready to go right into the workforce. In fact, uh, historically, we have a couple of guys that have graduated through this school that one of them works for me for the city of Hialeah. I actually trained him when he got on with us then. And we have others that are out there now in the city of Miami and Miami Day. So the program is designed for kids who have a passion for this industry. And it works out really well for them because the proof's in the pudding, the results just show. Um, the kids themselves, as you can see, they go out with us, they run calls with our guys when they're in the EMT program. Um, we set up a lot of different training scenarios where we're doing recruit class and collaborating with our fire department personnel in their training exercises. We have them come out and actually perform vehicle extrication. And these students themselves were actually participating a few months back with the last recruit class, actually cutting up all the parts. If you drive down here, uh, down 7th Street, you'll see all those cut up cars. These kids were actually getting their hands in there and actually doing it. So it's a hands-on type program. They actually get the skills and build their confidence. And when they finish and they graduate, they're ready to go. Okay, so as you can see, we have, uh, we provided the City of Hialeah Fire Department the gear that they no longer use anymore, but we get new gear. They've actually donated it to us, so we use it for the students. Um, when they're doing the Fire One program, they don't actually go into live fires. Okay, so they get all the training. Once they're 18 and they graduate, they can go into the other program, which is Firefighter 2, and then they'll get that live fire training there at the facility right there, Station 7. So he's in this whole uh, you know, PPPE ensemble, which is bunker gear. He'd be wearing this doing vehicle extrication, but he doesn't, of course, have the, the mask and the pack on right now. We didn't bring all that equipment here to show you, but we have all those uh, pieces of equipment for them that they use that for training as well. Next, we have the Law and Legal Studies. All right, good morning. Yeah, good morning. My name is Victoria Varela. I'm the director of the Law Academy. So I have a bunch of members here today. So the part of the Law Academy is obviously to learn about the legal system, but in addition, it's an opportunity to understand government systems as well. So we focus a lot on simulations, and scenarios, so it's not sitting reading the textbook. They'll get the opportunity, they'll learn about, for instance, how Congress works, and then we're actually going to simulate them problem solving how Congress works. 
most recently we had the opportunity to combine with another AP course, AP Human Geography, and we did a full scale of about 60 students doing a model United Nations. So they had to work together representing a various country that they were assigned, and then problem solve climate change. So they actually came up with very interesting solutions from the perspective of the countries that they represented. So in addition, we have multiple opportunities for the students to expand and go out in the real world. So we have a mock trial competition, as well as a page program. So our seniors get the opportunity to go up to Tallahassee and shadow a member in the House of Representatives or the Senate for the Florida legislative system. So they spend a week in Tallahassee seeing how it actually works, what actually happens. So I'm going to introduce and have two of our students just talk about their experiences with the Law Academy. and this year I'll be an attorney. Hi, my name is Kathy Rodriguez, and I'm a senior in the Law Academy. I've been in the Law Academy for the past two years since I had moved from a middle school specifically for this program because I knew this is the program that I needed to pursue a career in law. I cannot uh, thank this principal at the school so much for the many opportunities that they have given me to understand and compete at a level. I was recently accepted to the university, George Washington University in Washington. <laughs> and, and I will be leaving this, uh, this August to uh, Washington DC to pursue my career in law. And it has obviously been because of my teacher Verla and this principal and the dedication that this law academy has to the students and to prepare me for the real world and the law that I'm going to be pursuing. I'm super happy. If you want to pursue law, this is a school for you. Just trust me. If you really work hard for it, anything is achievable. I have, I'm, I have worked in so many political campaigns thanks to my this principal and um, other organizations that have helped me put myself in the real world. So if you want to do law, this is the only school. <laughs> I didn't pay her for that, I promise. I, I, didn't, I didn't offer her free breakfast for the rest of the school year. All right, we have Ms. Zamora coming up with the Education Academy. Come on down. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alyssa Zamora, and I am the director of the Education Academy. With me this morning, I have Lauren. She's going to be talking to you about some of the things that she's been doing at the Education Academy this year. Hi. My name is Lauren. Um, like Ms. Samora said, I'm going to be talking about the Education Academy. I'm in ninth grade and this is what we're doing. About the Education Academy. The Education Academy um, emphasizes the crucial role that parents, um, sorry, that teachers and staff have in students' education. We focus on things like, like the legislative changes and their effect on students. We focus on the students' emotional and physical well-being. We also focus on things like adverse childhood experiences and student, I mean, child abuse and neglect. We also have been looking at some policies and reflecting on them and advocating for change where needed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Early childhood and game. So we have been practicing. We've been practicing things like curriculum and lesson plans and looking at Bloom's taxonomy, which is a way of building up teaching and curriculum. And we will also be going to Regan Educational Academy to get some hands-on experience. Education advocacy. We. Um, we are focusing on a child's needs, their emotional and academic needs. We have lately been looking at the school policies, their discipline policies, and we've been researching things like um, restorative justice. We came up with a plan and we presented it to our administration and they liked it and with their support we're going to be going to the City of Hialeah Council and presenting their our plan to them and hopefully they like it and we'll be able to do that. One final note for next year, we will be partnering with a local college to help our students 
get the training they need to become educators, so to complete the cycle, to bring our students back into the classroom within a couple of years. So one of the things that we've been able to accomplish with this academy, this is one of our newer academies, is that there are, are no, I about five, we have five students that have graduated from here that are working as teacher aides while they're going to college with the idea that since they like these career, this career path of being an educator, being a teacher, they're getting the experience and learning the culture of Cohia. They're getting the best practices from the teachers that they're partnering with as teacher aides. And then the goal is for the full circle to come around is that they come teach you. And how powerful is that? They came through here, they walked these halls, they know the culture here, and now they're able to give back to their school as an educator, as a teacher here. We have one, we have one that graduates this, uh, this spring, and she will be one of our language arts middle school teachers next fall. And then this is another awesome Neo Academy, uh, also that we added not too long ago, and it's techie, and it has to do with computers, and creativity, like for all our cool artsy students, and, and it's been under the leadership of Christina martinez Pies, and I'll call it down, and she can present on the mass communication department. Woo! I'm a graduate from here, just saying. There's another graduate and alumni. So raise your hand if you're a graduate from here. Love YouTube or Instagram? Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Almost everybody. Okay. All right, so this is the academy that allows your kids to actually be on Instagram and YouTube during class, and it's okay. So if your kids love videography, uh, photography, if they love editing, um, you know, YouTubing, things like that, this is the academy for them. Not only do we do all of that, but we also help with marketing the school. So how many people receive the Vader in their house? Uh, a flyer in their house talking about this open house today. Okay, most of you guys. So we helped produce that mailer and send it out and we uh, on the Instagram page. So if you don't follow us on Instagram, please do. It's Kohia underscore Bulldogs. And then that way you'll find out everything that's going on with school. So I'm going to introduce some of my students here. They're the ones that really, you know, are the creative people behind this academy and they're the ones that, that brought it up. We'll start with uh, Manny Garcia, who's an alumni. Now he's our teacher's aide. He came back about a month ago to help with the program. Well, good morning, and again, thank you all for being here. I know it was raining and it was cold out, but you still managed to come, and that's fantastic. We really appreciate that. And just to touch base on what Principal Alvarez has talked about, the Mass Communications Academy, for me, the C stands for creativity. This is one of the, the academies where your child gets to really foster their creativity, get to express their creativity in many different outlets, digital, written, and photography, and journalism. And with that kind of creativity and ingenuity, you can go into the world and do whatever it is you want to do because workforces today are looking for creative students, they're looking for employers and employees with ingenuity, and that is exactly what we teach here at MassCom. And I guarantee you that you will come in here and you will leave knowing loads of information that are going to help you with your everyday life. So again, thank you for being here and we hope to see you here next year. So in the, so the Mass Communications Academy, we have three main parts. I would like to call them. We have the Illustrator class, the Journalism class, and then the TV Production class. Now, if you like journalism, like reported news, but don't like to be in front of camera and you have that much like computer stuff, you can do journalism where we have a newspaper that comes out um, quarterly, which is every semester, um, and they report the news all from all around the school. Uh, I remember when the Solar Eclipse happened, we had a whole segment on that. Uh, then we have the Illustrator class. The Illustrator class is pretty much this program that you can use on the computer, which you design logos, and if you like uh, to express your creativity like that, using art, use this uh, program to um, show it. Uh, like, most of the logos that you see, are made on industry. Uh, and your son or you will learn how to use them. And we have our TV production class, which is our class where we post a video weekly every Thursday about the events that happen in school and uh, we do skits, we do anything that you want to do creatively uh, will be posted on EA TV, uh, which is our YouTube. And you really truly get to express yourself through this uh, medium. Uh, I really enjoy the class, it's one of my personal favorites. 
Thank you. Hello, my name is Michael. Um, I came to the academy about two years ago, and I've been working on their great staff to help me uh, understand some of the equipment that goes on with the school. All from, you can see to the back, the cameras, all the way to our left, the uh, cameras. We're working with more than just cameras that a lot of people see. We also work in the uh, computers, on editing programs, and also such as Illustrator, Photoshop, and we're also working with journalism and perfecting our scripts, and how we're trying to expand and get out of the school. And I just put, um, we're not trying to stay inside the school, we're trying to reach out to other people. Um, one of the things I love about this uh, academy is that it allows you to take it outside and you can start off with yourself, like what I'm doing. Um, I'm starting to have my own camera and I'm starting to just uh, get my brand on my own and try to work myself up before I leave to the military. And then from the military, I can also just uh, take some pictures over there for them. But I'm also trying to work into expanding myself, go see new landscapes, see new people, take some Photoshop and just trying to extend my horizon on the cameras and what the field has to offer. Okay, and one more thing that I forgot to mention, the students in this academy also get industry certified in Adobe Illustrator, which is a graphic design program where they design logos, business cards, etc. And also for Diego. What's up, Bulldogs? I'm Diego and I'm Gio, and this is EA TV. Something has to do with that. Okay? Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Daniel Monteromo. I'm the assistant principal here at the school. I'm not a big talker, so I'll be quick. Um, I'm kidding. I talk too much sometimes. Um, I have a one and a, a year and a half old daughter. I'm going to tie this in all together. I have a year and a half old daughter. One day, my, my daughter was I'm carrying her. And my mom says, oh my God, imagine when she gets a boyfriend and goes to uh, her 15s. I go, whoa, whoa, what are you talking about? No, 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 I'm trying to work on changing her diaper tomorrow, not worrying about when she has a boyfriend. That's going to be a problem for me. But imagine, if you will, right now, your fifth grade students, your fourth grade students, uh, little brothers and little sisters who are here, who eventually might end up on this you know, sitting here watching this two or three years from now. Our seniors right now, okay, there's a component of our school that we require every student to have acceleration. So you're hearing the word industry certification thrown out, tape test, EMT. This component of acceleration assures that your child will have either a certification or college credits locked in by the time they get out of here. 
Okay, this year, with the help of all our staff, um, our staff from our academies, our cabinet advisor, Ms. Gonzalez, who pretty much caters specifically to all of our seniors. All right, we're gonna have a one, our first, hopefully, our graduation rate is very, very high. But this year will be our first, and we will make it happen, 100% graduating class, okay? And that's something, that is something that we're gonna strive to do every year, starting from this year, okay? As our first one. But more importantly, every student will come out here with a certification, either TAVE, uh, I'm sorry, the, their, yeah, their certification to become a, a PSA, either uh, an EMT uh, through Barry. Uh, our EMT guys will be able to go straight into paramedic school and they'll be ready to get hired right out of high school. Um, industry certification, they'll have some certification where they can get a job already, specifically in whatever academy they belong to, or they will have, at the very least, college credits from AP, dual enrollment. Now you're gonna hear a little bit about AP. Dual enrollment, we have partnerships with the RAL leadership, with Miami-Dade, and we continue to create partnerships with other universities so that we can have our kids, uh, I believe, how many kids do we have this year? Um, uh, early, we have early admission kids who are already working on college and we will have our first students graduating, 13 students early admission who are already working on college credits as seniors and we are gonna have our first students graduating with their AA by the time they graduate their senior year, okay? So this is something we're very proud of and something that we want to offer to you guys for, for, for your kids, okay? And, Last thing, and I'll, and I'll go. I came from another school, and from starting here at this school, I am extremely happy, happy, happy to be here. Um, not that I worked at a bad school, it's just the level of respect, honor, loyalty from our students is above and beyond. And we really are here, una familia, is the way we are here. We hope to welcome you guys to our familia. Thank you for giving me time. Good morning, buenos dias. So my partner in crime and I are here to tell you a little bit more about how to get that AA, how to graduate with an associate's degree. And there are two options of, and ways to take these courses to make that happen. One of them is advanced placement courses, which are approved by the College Board, which is an international organization. And we also have dual enrollment. And enough about me talking, let's hear it from the students. What is AP or advanced placement all about? Ladies? We have Liz and Samantha. Hi, our AP, we offer many different types of AP courses and in these courses our teachers not only prepare us for the rigorous test at the end of the year, but they prepare us for college and what to expect when you graduate from senior year. Um, they offer different types of like tutoring if needed and like the courses, they have like math, science, like AP Bio, AP Calculus, AP Statistics, and a lot of different types of courses. Hi, like Sam said, um, adding on to it, all the courses that you could possibly take in AP come to your advantage. They're all good because they're free. If, if you take AP classes or do a classes during high school, they're mostly free, they're not off. Um, it includes books, um, tutoring if needed, and so many other things that will all be good for you for your graduation. Thanks ladies, and we have a little video to showcase what AP is all about and why take AP. <laughs>
we have in sciences, we have biology and AP chemistry. For the social studies, we have five available. This includes AP world history, US history, human geography, AP psychology, and comparative government. We also have for the electives available. We, in the electives, we have available courses in studio art. Two courses, as a matter of fact. So if you're interested in advancing and being challenged and knowing what life will be like after high school, then the AP program is a program for you. Graduates from high school. 
All right, and wrapping up, a little bit about whoever likes sports, calling up our athletic director, Coach Kevin Freaky, to talk to you about our athletics program. All right, both moms. You guys are both moms already, right? You gotta be after watching all this. You know, you gotta be. There's no way, other way you bat. You're Bulldogs. So just, when you go back, see Miss, Mrs. Morales, get ready, registrar, they're coming to sign up, all right? Everybody's coming to see you here when I'm finished. We have a very good and a very competitive athletic program here at HEA. And uh, we're proud of it. Uh, we, we've added to it a lot over the years. I've been, this is my ninth year, and, and we started out with just a couple sports, and now we've got many sports with many different levels. Our, we have the, the three seasons, the uh, fall, the winter, the spring, because we are FHSA uh, school, which is the Florida High School Athletic Association. And so our sports that we sponsor through that uh, allow us to build the foundation with our middle school, which I see most of you are out here. So, but in the fall, we have boys and girls swimming. We have uh, boys and girls bowling. You can see one of our, our bowlers up here in this uh, banner hanging here. We've got three other banners that we're gonna have up, but we've had a very good start to our bowling teams here. And then we have volleyball, girls volleyball in the fall. And we have a couple of girls volleyball players sitting here. Give them away there, ladies. Um, that are very, we're very competitive in our fall sports this year uh, with all winning records and very good attitudes and very, and very competitive. You know, we, we pride ourselves on the sportsmanship aspect of it as much as we do on the wins and losses. And uh, these, these ladies are a very good example of that uh, on top of being very good uh, volleyball players. And we have varsity, junior varsity, and middle school girls volleyball. Then we move into the winter, and we have boys basketball, boys soccer, and next year we want to bring back girls soccer uh, during that same season. Uh, again, we, we, we work with the city of Hialeah uh, to provide us our facilities. We use these parks, uh, park facilities here. And then Bucky Dent, everybody familiar with where Bucky Dent uh, Park, it, we use their gymnasium and also the swimming pool over there. So that's where our volleyball and our basketball is played at over there at uh, Bucky Dent. And then we play our uh, outdoor sports over here. We actually play soccer this year for the first time at Slate Park. We use the outfield of the baseball field. And then we will use that as one of our spring venues because in the spring, Along with baseball, have a varsity, junior varsity, and middle school baseball. We will also have girls flag football, and we will have boys volleyball over at Bucky Den. Now, a sport that we're trying to start this year would be played out here, and that would be girls softball. So we are continuing to grow, continuing to add, and continuing to give your sons and daughters and grandsons and granddaughters an opportunity to play athletics. Obviously, there's a key component academically. They need to be over a 2.0 to participate. So we, we, we stress that obviously because we're not allowed to play student athletes that do reach that academic uh, requirement. So have a great day. I appreciate you being here and uh, enjoy the weekend. And now we'll, uh, we'll wrap up here and uh, get you started. Let me grab a seat right here. And this is uh, this is Miss Vega. Uh, Miss Vega, she's our dance teacher. Can you tell us uh, what makes uh, your dance program so special? Good morning. Stand up. Stand up. <laughs> Hi, my name is Miss Vega. This is my second year here at HEA. Um, I am part of the new building. So when you take our tour, the dance room is downstairs. Um, I'm in charge also of the fire and stainless team. We have dance as an elective, and we also have our sirens as an after-school club as well. And they do two the shows, our holiday show, and then our, our end-of-the-year spring show as well. 
And we will be offering musical theater next year, right? Did you know that? I signed up to teach it. This is Miss Vega, she's signing up for that. And in closing, guys, here, look, this is an example. This is what, what, at the end of the day, this is what we're all about. Uh, I grew up in Hialeah. Yo me creé en Hialeah. Eh, nací aquí. Soy un producto de esta comunidad. Born and raised in Hialeah, a product of this community. And now I have the opportunity to be the first principal of this municipal charter school. And I have the opportunity now to give back to my community as an educator. And these kids are following those same footsteps. All these kids are alumni that have graduated from here that are first responders. And these are just a few. Uh, Brian Fernandez, class of 2012, Miami-Dade County Police Officer. Dario Fernandez, that he was hanging somewhere here. I don't know if he left. You know, class of 2013, City of Hialeah Police Officer. Jonathan Campagnoli, class of 2014, City of Hialeah Fire Department, he's a firefighter. Daniel Sanchez, BSO, Broward Sheriff's Office, class of 2014. You have Braulio Hernandez, class of 2014 too, um, City of Hialeah Police Officer, and you have Joel Valdez, City of Hialeah Gardens Police Officer as well. So again, the proof is in the pudding. It's all about positioning our kids to give back to their community, and they can pick an academy that, I mean, it doesn't mean you have to be a police officer, a firefighter, but if you want to, you have that option. It doesn't mean that you have to be an attorney. It doesn't mean that you have to be a teacher. It doesn't mean that you have to go into mass communication and go into television production, but you have the option if you want to. Okay, and that's what it's all about. Cohe is about giving you guys options, giving you the best, highly effective quality education, and welcoming you to our family. So with that being said, we're gonna close up this, and then Miss uh, Leonette Gouache is gonna break you up into teams, and you're gonna get to tour our campus. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for getting out of bed on a cold, rainy day. Remember that when you start school at 7.30. Hold on.